Fertile Floods by Kristen Cashore What You Already Know A rock is a solid, non-living material made of minerals. There are three kinds of rock. Igneous rock forms from molten minerals and gases. Sedimentary rock forms from sediments. Metamorphic rock is rock that has been changed because of heat, pressure, or both. Minerals form from non-living matter. You can identify a mineral by its color, streak, and other properties. Most things that we use contain minerals. Air, water, and rock particles make up three of soil's four ingredients. Sands, silts, and clays account for soil's rock particles. These rock particles contain minerals that are rich in nutrients. The fourth ingredient in soil is humus. Humus is made up of dead and decaying plants and animals. Crops grow best in soil that has a lot of water and nutrients. One of the best soils for crops is called loam. Most land gets its water from rain. However, some places get their water through flooding. People usually think of floods as being harmful events that hurt the land and its living things. But some floods bring water and needed nutrients to dry land. In this book, you will learn about these kinds of floods. Facts on Floods Floods are caused by overflowing bodies of water, including rivers, lakes, and streams. They are also caused by groundwater rising up to the surface and overflowing the land. When the soil becomes saturated, meaning when it can't hold any more water, its water table, or the top layer of groundwater, floods the land. A flood can be one of the most harmful forces in nature. It can harm people and crops, ruin homes, and spread diseases. However, there are some places where floods bring important benefits. People depend on some annual floods to bring water and minerals to the land. The Thames flood barrier was built to prevent flooding in London. Historically, rivers like the Nile in Egypt have flooded regularly. The Nile's waters irrigate the land. Irrigation makes the soils of the Nile floodplain some of the most fertile in the world. Quick Quiz What did the ancient civilizations of Egypt, Mesopotamia, China, and India all have in common? Answer They all developed along huge rivers. The irrigation provided by their rivers' annual floods supported farming, trade, and many other activities. Flooding rivers carry silt. This silt is rich in nutrients. It fertilizes the land and creates productive farmlands when flood waters deposit it there. If it weren't for these fertile floods, Drought and famine might happen in many places. The floodplain is the low area covered by a river during a flood. Deltas So how does a flooding river work? As it moves downhill over rocks and land, it collects soil particles rich in nutrients. When the river reaches flatter ground, it slows down. Most rivers flow into a lake, sea, or ocean. When a river reaches the lake, sea, or ocean, 
it drops its particle load. Over a long period of time, this material forms an area of land at the mouth of the river called a delta. Deltas are made fertile by the nutrients they receive from floods. There are fertile deltas all over the world. The Mississippi Delta covers an enormous amount of land in the southeastern United States. For people who live near these deltas, the river can be both a friend and an enemy. If the river does not flood enough, people may suffer drought and famine. If it floods too much, then property is damaged and people are hurt. So everyone hopes the river floods just enough. When rivers flood, they do more than irrigate floodplains and spread minerals. They also change the shape of the land. Some land gets eroded or washed away. Other land gets this washed away material, which builds up and the river itself sometimes changes its course. To prevent such changes, many countries have dammed their major rivers. Later, you will read about the damming of the Nile and its results. Rivers move quickly on steep land. When they reach level land, they slow down and spread out. The Nile. The Nile River is the longest river in the world. It has always been the center of life for Egyptians. The capital of Egypt, Cairo, is on the Nile. So is Khartoum, the capital of Sudan. Farther to the south, a branch of the Nile begins at Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. Although the Nile flows for hundreds of miles in Egypt, it gets its water from countries such as Ethiopia. It rains a lot in Ethiopia during the summer. For thousands of years, the Nile carried the water from Ethiopia's rains all the way to Egypt. In the past, this caused flooding. When the Nile flooded, it made the narrow strip of land on either side of the river very fertile. The flooding river provided the water and nutrients needed to grow crops. Sometimes the river rose too much or not enough. In the worst years, it didn't rise at all, leading to terrible drought and famine. The corn, rice, wheat, and other crops grown along the Nile needed a lot of people to tend to them, so families started having more children. This made the famine years even worse, because there were so many more mouths to feed. The Egyptian government decided to take steps to try to solve the problems created by drought and famine. They built the Aswan High Dam. The Aswan High Dam, built in 1970, has stopped the Nile's annual floods and controlled the water supply. During rainy years, it stores water. During times of drought, it releases water. The dam also generates electricity for all of Egypt. The Aswan High Dam keeps people and houses safe from floods. It also helps prevent drought and famine. However, the dam has also had some very bad effects. By stopping the floods, it has prevented the silt suspended in the water from reaching the land. This has forced Egyptian farmers to use man-made fertilizers. As time passes, their land grows more dry and unhealthy without the traditional silt deposits. Because the dam held back the flow of the Nile, some of the lands behind the dam were permanently flooded. Thousands of people who lived on these lands had to leave their homes. 
some ancient Egyptian relics were lost under the water. The Egyptians tamed their wild river, but their land would never be the same. Bangladesh Bangladesh is a small country near India. The deltas of three big rivers, the Ganges, the Brahmaputra, and the Magna, form much of Bangladesh's land. These rivers start all the way up in the Himalayas. They end at the Indian Ocean. Bangladesh floods if there is a lot of snow melting in the Himalayas. It also floods if there is heavy rain upstream in India and elsewhere. The yearly rainstorms, called monsoons, also flood Bangladesh. The floods bring rich silt deposits, which make Bangladesh one of the most fertile places in the world. Farmers in Bangladesh are used to flooding. Many of them build their houses on stilts. That way, when the floods come, the people don't have to leave. However, some years the flooding causes terrible devastation. It harms people and animals, washes away houses, and destroys crops. The farmers who live near Bangladesh's rivers must always be alert. Okavango Delta The Okavango River originates in Angola and flows through Namibia and Botswana in southern Africa. This river is unique. It does not end at a lake, sea, or ocean. Instead, it ends at a wetland in the middle of the Kalahari Desert. This wetland is called the Okavango Delta and it is one of the largest inland deltas in the world. The Okavango Delta is an oasis of life in the harsh desert. It floods every summer. This flooding irrigates and fertilizes the delta so that a variety of plants and animals can grow and live there. Whenever a river floods, it can cause destruction. But sometimes people depend upon floods to fertilize and irrigate their lands. Sometimes flooding even helps plants and animals. Rivers are not predictable. Sometimes they're supposed to rise, but fail to. Other times they do rise, but when they're not expected to. In the best years, rivers rise just the right amount at just the right time. This is when the people and the land are happy to have a fertile flood. Mm.